Blessings, blessings. How are everybody doing today? I'll be with you shortly. Just tag into my other pages. I pray that all is well. I want to welcome you to today's Deliver Me Nugget. My name is Apostle Lisa Biggers, and I, I want to thank you for being here on, on this broadcast with me today. Blessings to you, blessings to you. And so what today what we're going to talk about um, is being broken and dangerous, an adult acting like a child. Broken and dangerous, an adult acting like a child. We're going to come from 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the 11th verse. He says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. We're coming from the standpoint of talking about for the month of May, I've been talking about overcoming broken, the, over, the broken conscience. What is conscience? Blessings to you. Conscience is the way that you think. It's your thought process. It's the way that you see situations. You see circumstances. And you may say, I see situations and circumstances fine. But can I ask you, have you ever went through some, some rejection, some disappointment, some hurt, some uh, misunderstanding, being betrayed, being lied on, being cheated on, being abused, and you got some unresolved um, issues that you have not been healed and delivered from? Can I tell you blessings to you? Guess what this is going to do? This will break your conscience when you've been rejected over and over again. People called you out your name over and over again. Being misunderstood, being let down, being disappointed, and not being at a place to get healing. Can I tell you, it breaks your conscience. It breaks the way that you see life. It breaks the way that you see yourself. And guess what it does? It causes us to go around in life, walking around, not seeking to be healed. This is what I found out when I I look all over the social media platforms I see a bunch of people walking and living as if they are fine it's where we have gotten comfortable being broken we got comfortable where we're wounded we're dealing with low self-esteem we're dealing with hurt we're dealing with pain and we got people we're passing by people who can help us we're not talking to our leaders we're not talking to the counselors we're not talking to the coaches we're living life as if it's fine and we got to know that something is wrong with this this is why we're continuing to pass brokenness to the next generation because they don't see us heal. They see us hurt one another feeling. They see us down and depressed. It's so common to be depressed. It's so common to be hopeless. It's so common to feel misunderstood. And the sad thing about it is we don't go and look for an answer. We have gotten to some of, not everybody, but as a majority of people have gotten comfortable being broken that they don't care. They think that it's the norm. Can I tell you when you no longer take heed to correction, you got even with children, they get to a place when children no longer want to listen to their parents, when you got um, people in church no longer want to listen to the leader, when you got co-workers, I mean work employees don't want to listen to the employer. This is a generation where you got people that think that they know it all and this is an indication of brokenness. It's where God is putting people in your life to help you but because you're prideful you think that you know it all and that you say I figured out on my own not understanding this is an indication that you're broken. Not only that you're broken but it's an indication 
situation that wherever you got hurt at at whatever age in your life, you are still wounded. So what am I saying? It's the hurt little girl on the inside of the ladies. It's a hurt little boy on the inside of the men. And instead of learning from our mistakes and getting the help we need, we're letting the hurt us, the immature us, we're letting that part of us run our lives. We're making poor decisions. We're not learning from our mistakes. We're just trying to tend and take care of the people without taking care of ourselves. And this is a problem. This is a problem in our society because we're trying to help and love somebody else when we don't even love ourselves. We're trying to be in a relationship when yet we don't even know what the love of God looks like. Here it is that we're giving our, our everything to somebody else when we have not even first learned to love ourselves. And so this is where we got to begin to look at ourselves and say, what's going on with me? What it is that I'm lacking? I'm finding out people, we are so broken. We don't even know that we're dealing with self-hatred. We don't even know if we're dealing with um, low self-esteem, we're dealing with insecurity, we're dealing with rejection, we're just living and we're going on and we're not paying attention. You would know about a demonic spirit being on the inside of you by how you act, by what you say, and by what you do. And this is where people have gotten to a place where they're not even paying attention to their own thoughts. We're so busy doing stuff that we're not even looking at, that you know that I don't. you don't like looking at yourself in the mirror. You don't want to do anything that's going to help you, but yet we spend a lot of time trying to help other people but we're not trying to help ourselves that's a broken state this is a state where we're looking we, we need help with something and we're comfortable being broke. We're comfortable being in bad situations. It's where we're not even looking for things to get better. We look for it to get better in our minds, but we're not looking at ourselves to say, what am I doing wrong? What it is that I need to do? Do I need to go back to school? Do I need to change professions? Where well, you're examining yourself because you're saying, hey, I deserve better than this. Hey, I want better in life. But when you're looking for a people where well, we want a quick fix and and we thinking that if I just get somebody laying hands on me, if I just get somebody to pray for me, everything is going to change. Not understanding that it's got to be a change in your mindset. It got to be a change in the way that you think. But because our conscience is broken, we find ourselves being around other broken people. Can I tell you when you're around other broken people, blessings to you, woman of God, when you're around other broken people, the only thing that they can produce in you is how to be broken. If you're going to be healed, you got to be willing to put yourself around other people that going in the direction that you want to go in because if you're comfortable if you're so sensitive when somebody is trying to help you but you're so sensitive you can't take this truth you can't take constructive criticism that's the indication that your conscience is broken this is where we should be able to take constructive criticism somebody letting you know you got to stop lying you got to turn down your plate you got to begin to face your fears well I don't want to hear all of that see and this is why we are broken because we don't want to hear some things about th things about ourselves because we don't like ourselves. We don't like what our situation look like. And so we avoid looking at ourselves, looking at other people. And that's the dangerous thing about excuse me, social media, because it will have you looking at somebody else's life to get your mind off your own life and not understand it. It's okay sometimes to look at it, but when you so consumed with another person's life and then yet you can't look at your life to be at a better place to say, what can I do to make myself better? Do I need to educate myself? Do I need to go take a trade? Do I need to read a book? What do I need to do to make me a better person? Because if you're going to be delivered from yourself, you got to be able to recognize what are you bringing broken. What part of you are broken? And see, a lot of times, even if you're with people who always use you, you're around people who always call you name. That's an indication that you are broken. Everybody calling each other names. Can I tell you when people take advantage of you and or you taking advantage of other people and you don't have any convictions and you think things like this is funny, this is an indication you are broken. When you expecting all these wonderful things to take place and you want God to do all these things for you, yet you're not studying the word of God, yet you're not going to Bible study, yet you're not going to church, but then yet you expecting God to do all these things. You're thinking like a broken person because a person that is healed, understand when you read the Bible, you got to do more than say, I checked the box and went to church. You got to do more than say, I went to Bible study and I had a good time, but you got to apply what you're learning to your life. You got to apply what's in that word of God to what you're doing so that you can see change take place in your life. Can 
I tell you, you got to begin to evict the toxic thoughts that are in your mind. When you hear your thoughts saying, you know what, don't nobody like me. Don't nobody care about me. I'll never be able to afford that house. I'll never be able to get that job. You got to be able to evict negative thoughts that you hear in your mind. Because guess what? The enemy will keep you at a place where you're entertaining those thoughts. And you believe the thoughts over what God has said about you. That's the indication that you are broken. Because your thoughts are more realer because you're still in an unconscious state mentally at the hurt and the pain. This is why a lot of times we remember the hurt and the pain, what people have done to us because we're still broken. And this is where you got to understand you got to do more than just go to the altar. When you go to the altar and you get a breakthrough and you felt that thing break, now you got to get in the word and you got to build yourself up. You got to build up your thought processes. Now you got to change how you think. You got to change what you say to yourself. You got to change what you're doing because if you're not willing to change and you thought the only thing you had to do was to go to the altar can I tell you that's an indication that you are broken and I have found out that a lot of people do not know that they are broken and that's right. It doesn't matter what nobody else feels. It's all that matters is about what you feel. Because when we're talking about loving ourselves, you're, you're, you're now putting you as a priority. You're no longer looking at what another person has to say about you, but your focus is on what God has to say about you. And you got to choose to agree with what God has spoken over what people say. This is where you may have to, dis you may have to uh, separate yourself from people that don't see you the way that God sees you. You, you got to understand that everybody is not going to like you. Everybody is not going to accept you. And that's okay. You got to be willing to tell yourself that's okay. And But you got to realize it's not your uh, responsibility to try to make somebody like you that don't like you. That's an indication that you need to move on because that person is not the one that needs to be in your life. The people that do appreciate you, those are the people that you need to entertain. This is where we got to stop being mad, stop going going back and forth because see we playing a lot of childish game that's why the topic is being broken and dangerous because we're doing some dangerous things we're supposed to be God's children but then yet we're acting like little children on earth we're acting like little children in the world but if you are God's child we're supposed to look like God act like God do what we've seen Jesus do as an example but a lot of times we can't see that because we're looking at ourselves from a broken place this is a part where people will lie to themselves and they will lie to other people because they don't want to deal with their issues. You got to understand if you don't want to deal with your issues, you are dangerous because what you're doing is building up a toxicity on the inside of you. It's just like somebody keep putting poison and Clorox and pine saw and uh, ammonia and you put that concoction together it's going to knock somebody out it's going to cause an explosion and what's going to happen is if we don't deal with our issues we're causing explosions to take place in our mind because we're making the wrong decisions because we're not recognizing what's wrong with us what am I doing that's causing me a uh, uh, pain How, you know ask yourself am I really happy with my life not is anybody happy with you but are you happy with your your life because a lot of times we're not happy with our life but if I was to ask you what's about in your life that you're not happy with a lot of times we'll say what other people have said about us but we have not taken the time to find out what's going on on the inside of you because a lot of times we're talking about the response of what another person have said about us but it's not about what you feel about yourself you're saying what another person have said about you and this is what makes that dangerous because it makes you a people pleaser it makes you where you're trying to follow after somebody else just to be accepted. When God says I accept you the way that you are. He said I came for those that were sick not those that was well and this is why you get in that word and you let that word rebuke you. You let the word correct you. You allow the word to heal you. You allow the word to deliver you and a lot of times because we're so in our flesh where I don't feel anything. This is why you got to understand the laws of the kingdom because see the kingdom, the word of God the Bible say the word of God is alive it's sharper than a two-edged sword. You don't have to feel it, but he needs for you to believe it. He needs for you to say, I'm breaking that shackle. I'm break. I'm casting out that spirit of abuse. I'm casting out that spirit of low self-esteem. You got to begin to understand when you open up your mouth, God is performing surgery on you. Whatever word that you're speaking, if you're speaking the word of God, you got to believe that it's done, whether or not you're feeling it or not. But a lot of times, because we're not feeling it, we think that it's not real, not understanding that 
that's what the devil wants you to do because that's part of being a broken mind and having a broken uh, uh, conscience because you base everything on your feelings. Well, I don't feel right. Can I tell you, you cannot feel right and be in right standing with God. Can I tell you, you can be feeling comfortable and out of the will of God because not understanding that you're going off your feelings. You got to understand your flesh will never be saved. Your flesh will never be saved. And this is why you got, that's right, you got to constantly be at a place where you keep pushing and don't go based on somebody else. This is where I also too being broken is you're comparing yourself to another person. You're not supposed to compare yourself to another person. You're supposed to compare yourself to the word of God. Compare yourself to the word. So then, because when you're looking at other people, you don't know what those people are doing behind the scenes. You just know what they're telling you. But this is where you get in that word and you allow the word to heal you. You allow the word to shape you because God want to shape you into what he he wants you to be and we don't want to be looking like somebody else we want to be what God told us can I tell you because when God heals you and delivers you he raised you up for a people that's just like you he's going to use you to be able to minister to people that felt what you felt that dealt with some of the same things that you dealt with this is why it's very important for you to get out of place for you to mature for you to mature and do you know what take constructive criticism get in the class get what somebody can help you learn about about being being healed. Learn speaking affirmations over yourself. You know what? You got to be busy to building yourself up, reading books about being healed and delivered. Begin to say, God, open up my eyes to help me see what is my issue. What is my issue why I can't go forward? You know what? And listen to Holy Spirit as he tells you the things that are going on in your life because a lot of times we're comparing and we're sitting up there wishing we were somebody else not understanding that that's a sin and that's an indication that you're broken broken because you're telling God what he made in you is not good enough and that he should have made you like somebody else. You got to understand just how you are. God made you the way that he wants you to be and he wants you to sharpen those gifts. He wants you to grow and mature in them gifts. He don't want you to look like somebody else. He wants you to begin to open up your mouth and sound the trumpet in the word and speak what he has told you. Do what he has told you. This is a lot of times when you got people trying to help other people. They trying to do what other people are doing not understanding we don't need no more copycats we need people that are originals we know we need people that are willing to be open and say yes I got I need help I God delivered me from low self-esteem God delivered me from witchcraft and you've been able to speak what God has done for you but if you are a shame and you think and want to make everybody think that you know what I always been like this no I have not that's why we call it deliver me from me because I'm sharing with you things that God has delivered me from. and But I'm telling you, I was dangerous to myself. I would help everybody else, but I was dangerous to myself. I watched everybody else go forward and I found myself being stagnated because I put more emphasis on helping somebody else than I put on myself. And you got to understand that's dangerous because guess what? Sometimes people won't help you. This is where you got to know how to love yourself because if you so used to giving to somebody else, you don't know how to give to yourself. You don't know what you want. You don't know what you like. You don't know what you need. And this is why you need to be able to get yourself around people that's going to help you to uh, um, uh, uh, pull out your voice, to pull out your issues, the things that are going on with you so that you can overcome. Are you still are you still dealing with fears? Face your fears. This is where you got to open up your mouth and face your fear. Well, I don't want nobody to leave me. You got to understand if a person going to love you, they going to love you either for you or they not. But you got to stop staggering trying to keep somebody in your life that you really know that they really not going to be there. I'm talking about on all relationships across the board. And this is why God is saying you got to let go and stop being a child because you got to understand God can't use no little baby. He can't use no baby to represent him. He needs a mature saint. He needs somebody who know what God has told them to do and that they're going to follow through it. And this is where you got to begin to say, you know what? I believe in me. If nobody else believe in me. This is what you got to begin to encourage yourself. Stop putting all the pressure on the man and woman of God on the prophets and the evangelists and you open up your mouth and prophesy to yourself and you got to deal with that inner critic because it's a critic on the inside of you where the devil lives in you and it try to tell you that you ain't good enough. It try to tell you to compare yourself to other people and you got to begin to tell that inner critic shut up. I cast you out of me in the name of Jesus. This is where you got to deal with the voices. The voices that 
that you hear in your head that try to tell you that you'll never mount up to anything. The voices that will tell you that you'll never get married. Nobody don't like you. Nobody don't care about you. You will never get the position. You will never get the job. You got to begin to silence those voices. Those voices that you hear in your head. You got to begin to cast it down. The Bible say cast down every wicked imagination. Every image that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Because when you hear those thoughts it's the job that the enemy is using them thoughts to make you believe it. Can I tell you, your conscience is going to go by what's in your head. You're going to see what's, what you believe in your head. The Bible say in Proverbs 23 and 6, so is a man thinking, so is he. And so even though you made, you don't feel like nobody love you because that's the thought you hear in your head. You feel like you can't afford that house because that's what's in your head. You feel like you can't get out of this because that's the thought in your head. See, this is where you got to deal with the thoughts that are in your mind. This is where we need to sit down and we need to write down the thoughts, that, the negative thoughts that we hear in our head and you need to divorce them thoughts. You need to say I divorce you, I renounce and denounce you in the name of Jesus and I disengage you and I cast you out of my spirit. I cast you out of my soul and you know what in God I'm giving you permission to wash me and cleanse me and you start speaking what you want to see in your life. This is where you got to understand God said it in the word of God it said that we are a co creator with Christ. Do you not know that God is going to use you to create who he wants you to be? God is going to use you. He's going to use your mouth to speak his word to create you to what he wants you to be. And this is why we got to stop saying what somebody else saying. Stop saying what somebody else feel and speak what God is speaking about you and stop paying, putting all your attention on what somebody else. A lot of times we put more attention on the negative. A lot of times we put more attention on what people have said about us. Start bragging on what God has said about you. God said that you're beautiful and you're wonderfully made. God said that you're the head and not the tail. You got to tell yourself I'm an overcomer. You got to say I got a prevailing anointing. I have an anointing to break through and break out. You got to begin to say my voice is being heard. You got to begin to say I'm not moved by the opposition. I'm not moved by people's faces. You got to open up your mouth and speak over your life. This way you got to be fully persuaded. Because if you ain't persuaded, ain't nobody else going to be persuaded. This is where you got to say, I'm not a child. I divorced that hurt little girl that's on the inside of me. You will no longer make decisions for me. I will, not, I will no longer make decisions from an immature place, but I'm making decisions from a mature place. Why is it mature? Because now I'm in the word of God and I realize I don't have to act how people act. I don't have to go tit for tat. That's a place of immaturity. When you see people throwing rocks and hide their hands, that's an indication that they are immature and that they are wounded. The Bible said when you got a problem with a person, he said you go to that person and you begin to reconcile. You and that person come together on one accord and you begin to tell them, I'm offended by what you did or I don't appreciate what you did and talk to them like a real woman or real man. But a lot of times we have an attitude, we roll in our eyes, we got issues with people and we throw in shade and that's an indication that you're broken because you're still acting like a little girl or a little boy because you don't have the confidence to go tell that person that you got an issue with them. If you can't talk to that person like a man or a mature man and woman of God, you got to ask yourself, do you really want to be who God have called you to be? This is where you got to learn from your poor decisions. You got to look back over your life, look back over decisions that you have made and begin to look at what was bad and what was good. As a lot of times we go from one relationship to the next relationship and you never took the time to look back and say, what did I do wrong? You got to look at at yourself, you find yourself in that same situation, it's because you did not go back and look at your mistakes. This is where you got to go back and you got to dissect those relationships, dissect those uh, patterns that you went through and begin to say, God, show me where I went wrong. Show me where I was immature. Show me. Why? Because you got to understand if God is going to bring you out, he got to know that you have learned from your past mistakes. This is why we find ourselves making the same patterns over and over and over again because we have not learn from our mistakes and you got to understand that's an immature person that's not learning from their mistakes when we're going through can I tell you when we're going through a lot of times oh Jesus and we talking so much about the devil but this is where you got to understand you are being tested because God wants to promote you you are being tested because God is trying to shift you to another place but because we are in an immature mindset we don't understand that God is trying to promote us we're looking at it like we're doom and gloom we're looking at it like it's hopeless and God is saying I'm trying to mature you I'm trying to 
to promote you. That's why you going through warfare. I want to see, did you learn your lesson? Did you learn from the past? You got to understand if God is going to take you higher to another place in him, you got to be willing to pass the test. This is why some of us are in the same place we've been for the last five years because we've been, we have not passed the test. We still doing the same thing. Somebody get ready to cuss you out. You cuss them back out. You are failing the test. Somebody rolling their eyes at you. You rolling your eyes at them. You are failing the test because you got to begin to show that you are mature. That's what he said in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, uh, verse 11. When I was as a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. He said, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. And this is where if you're going to be a man or woman, man, you got to stop being childish. You got to stop. How come the pastor got to tell you you got an attitude? How come your supervisor got to tell you you keep showing up late? How come your mama got to tell you you didn't wash the dishes? You didn't take the trash out? How come you got to tell your husband you didn't wash my car? How come you got to tell the wife, you know what, when you going to cook me something to eat? This is what we got to understand. We are still walking as children. This is why people got to come to us with these things. You know what, you said that to somebody, you know that was ugly. You knew what you did was ugly, but why Why do you think that it's okay for you to be broken and say ugly things to somebody and it does not deal with your conscience? That's an indication you are broken. And we need to say, God, show me where the areas that I'm broken at because that's why I'm doing this series because I'm like, Lord, what is wrong with us? People are saying rude and ugly things and they're not saying they sorry. They're not going back to get it right with another person. They're turning their head. They're being disrespectful. And I'm like, God, we are so broken and we don't have a clue that we're acting like little children and yet we saying that we're men and women of God and we're giving God a bad name. We're giving the name of God a bad name because we're saying that we're children of God but then when people look at our actions if you can't tell nobody sorry and you know you did something wrong you are broken. Can I tell you even here when you're comfortable with less, you spending every dime you have. And then yet we go to church and God said, we want to sow into this person. They need some help with their light bill. Oh, I can't do it. How come we always at a place where we can't help anybody else, but every time we spend it, every dime we have, that's an indication that we are broken. Can you remember the story of the five talents? God began to tell them, he began to get told them to do things with the talents. The man that had the one tablet and say, I bear it. God rebuked him. He said, you could have at least put it in the bank to even give me some interest. We are so at a place where we're comfortable with less. We have $2 left from our check and we're comfortable with it. You got to begin to say, God, teach me how to be a good steward. God, teach me how to be a good steward of my money and of my finances. Because if God is going to bless you with much, you got to know how to be a good steward. This is what we got to know how to start saving. We got to know how to appreciate what we got. You may want a new car, but you got to ask yourself, do you keep your old car clean? Do you keep your new house? You say, God, I want a house, but do you keep your apartment clean or is it a mess? See, this is where God is looking at our actions. It's not about nobody else looking at it, but it's God looking at what you got. Are you faithful for what you got? Are you thankful for what you got? But when we are broken, we don't understand we are dangerous and we ain't no good for the father and we're no good for nobody else and this is why a lot of times we take pleasure in being in toxicity and we're comfortable being in uh, things that are harmful relationships, bad relationships bad uh, 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 groupings people who we hang around with because we're at a place where we have not realized that this is no good it's where we hear the right thing, we hear the word of God we hear the preaching and teaching of the word but you'll go home and do the opposite. That's the indication that you're broken. God is telling you, you got to read your word. You got to declare, you got to decree. You got to speak. You got to have affirmation. I ain't got time to do that. That's the indication that you're broken because you don't understand you're fighting a spiritual, a spiritual fight and it's going to be with your words. And so if you're not speaking the word of God and you're speaking negativism of your life, the reason why you got negative, because that's what you've been speaking out your mouth and you haven't been speaking what the word of God has spoken for you to speak. And so now we've been overlooking what God has said. And so this is why I also, too, we, we have been looking at poor examples. We've been looking at poor examples in our lives. And instead of us getting ourselves 
ourselves around people who are going in the direction that we want to go in, we're still being around people who are not a good example for us. They may be good people, but they're not a good example for what we want to do. And you got to begin to understand God is saying you're in a toxic place. You're in a toxic relationship. And you got to understand that you're broken and you're dangerous. And this is where God is trying to tell us that we got to be able to get out of place and understand that we can't help nobody if we're broken. And so I pray that as I get ready to close out on these nuggets, that you begin to go back over 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verse 11, and begin to ask the Holy Spirit to show you areas where you are uh, immature, show you areas where you're broken at, because if you don't recognize you're broken, can I tell you I was broken and didn't recognize I was broken until I start being around whole people and I start comparing. And I'm like, oh, wow, I don't do what they do. I don't act like that. And then I started looking. They were so much further than me. And that's how come I knew those are people that I need to listen to. That's how come I knew blessings to you. Those are people who I need to uh, uh, get advice from. And I need to follow them because they're going in a direction that I want to go. And so as I close out, you got to ask yourself, Lord, show me. Am I broken? And if I'm broken, show me the areas where I'm broken at. Show me the areas where I'm acting immature immature at. Show me where I've been acting like a child and teach me how to be mature. Can I ask you, invest in yourself. A lot of times people are trying to minister to other people before they try to minister to themselves. I'm at this place in my life. I'm going to make sure that I help me before I go out and try to help anybody else. You know why? Because the Bible say, I healed in, I healed in my name. I cast that, 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 That's what they told God. I healed in your name. I cast devils out in your name. And he said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. So that tells me that you can do the things of the kingdom and you yourself go to hell. And this is why I say, take the time to make sure that you're not broken and that you're dealing with issues that you are immature at, issues that you are broken and do something about those issues so God can begin to use you to be who he called you to be. Because my thing is, ministry is going to always be here, but we want to be able to minister effectively. And we want to be able to talk to people about what God is doing in our lives, telling people what we know God is doing and that it works because it worked in your life. And so as I close out, I ask you, blessings to you. I ask you, allow the Holy Spirit to deal with you. Understand that's what he's here for. He didn't come to condemn you. He came to let you know what we have come short at. And so where you'll know what to do. And so you don't have to walk around and say, I don't know what to do. No, you need to ask Holy Spirit and watch him reveal to you areas that you're broken at and begin to educate yourself. Get around people going in that same direction so that you can be the best you that God wants you to be. And you won't be walking around broken thinking that you're normal and understanding that you're out of the God's will because you're walking around here broken. So this is Apostle Lisa Biggers. I pray that something that I said was a blessing to you. I will see you all Thursday. You all have a good afternoon. Be blessed.